right now. Well, good afternoon and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Wednesday lunchtime drive through for September 2nd, 2020. Hope you're having a great day today. And uh, our topic today is one that is uh, interesting a lot of people. We have an election coming up in just another couple months. And one of the key areas that each one of the candidates uh, have plans is in the area of taxes. And so that's what we want to talk about today, comparing the Trump and Biden tax plans. Now, for those of you, this is your first time in the Wednesday lunchtime drive through My name is Damon King. I'm a certified financial planner, professional and wealth management specialist with Chapelwood Financial Services. I'm also the lead instructor for Chapelwood University, our educational branch. And so that's why we host this weekly webinar as well as some of our other classes that I will tell you about here at the end. So let's uh, jump into what we're gonna talk about today. So uh, the first thing that I want to say is this is not a political commercial. I'm not advocating that you vote for either candidate. That is your own personal decision. I'm not proclaiming which candidate's tax plan is better than the others. All of the information that you're gonna to hear today comes courtesy of Financial Planning Magazine as a certified financial planner. I subscribe to that publication. And so when I got this information, I thought this would make a great webinar because you need to know what's going on. The only reason, the only purpose for this uh, course today is so that you are better informed and a better informed mind makes better decisions than an uninformed mind, right? I think we would all agree with that. So that is the only purpose that I have uh, with showing you this and going over this information. So let's dive right in. So let's talk about, we're going to talk about several different tax uh, implications that both Biden and Trump uh, have discussed. So let's talk about individual tax rates, first of all. So if Biden gets elected, he wants to restore the top tax rate to 39.6%. And he wants to create that for incomes above $400,000. Right now, the top tax rate is just 37%. It was 39.6% prior to the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act that was signed by President Trump at the end of 2017 and then took effect in 2018 but Biden would like to see that top tax rate go back immediately. And he wants to see it on incomes of 400,000 plus. Now, not surprisingly, if Trump wins another term, he wants to keep that rate where it is. And in addition, he wants to lower uh, the uh, middle-class tax rate from 22% down to 15%. So if you recall, when he signed the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, there were about five of the different tax brackets that saw a reduction in their tax rate. He would like to further reduce a tax rate from 22% down to 15% for that kind of middle income level. Now, one thing we know for certain, regardless of what happens with President Trump and well, really anybody right now, the tax rates are scheduled to revert back to what they were starting with tax year 2026, the income tax rates. There are some changes that were made that are gonna revert back sooner than that. But as far as the income tax rates, we know right now they will sunset at the end of tax year 2025 and starting in 2026, all those tax rates are scheduled to go back to what they were prior to the uh, reduction due to the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. What about itemized deductions? One of the big changes with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, again, 2017, was that it doubled the standard deduction. And so what Biden wants to do is he wants to cap the benefit on itemized deductions at the 28% rate. So itemized deductions are things like your mortgage interest that you pay, your charitable contributions, certain deductions that you might take for uh, medical expenses. Now the contributions to traditional IRAs those are not an itemized deduction. Those are what we call an above the line deduction. So when you contribute to a traditional IRA, you're actually helping to reduce your overall taxable income. And so that helps to uh, achieve your adjusted gross income. But many of these other deductions fall below the line. And those below the line, after we've calculated your adjusted gross income, those are the itemized deductions. If you do not itemize and you take the standard deduction instead, then you take whichever one is higher, right? What's gonna give you the better tax position? 
Well, if you take the standard deduction, you're not going to itemize. But Biden wants to cap those itemized, uh, the benefits uh, for itemized deductions at 28%. Again, not surprisingly, President Trump wants to extend and make permanent the current rules. And the current rules are the standard deduction basically doubled for all tax filers, whether you are an individual, head of household, joint. But because the standard deduction is so much higher now, it makes it far less likely that you are going to itemize your deductions. In fact, less than 1% of American households itemized deductions in 2019 due to the higher standard deduction. That had the effect of simplifying taxes for a lot of people, but a lot of people didn't see the tax savings that they thought they were going to get. We saw a reduction in tax rates, but a lot of people were thinking they're going to get these big refunds. Uh, that didn't necessarily happen. Not to mention getting a big refund. I mean, in, in my own professional and personal opinion, getting a giant refund on your taxes should not be your ultimate goal. You need to recognize what a refund on your taxes is. It is a return of income that you have already earned. It is an interest-free loan that you make to the federal government. So Uncle Sam isn't giving you back found money. It's your own money. All right, so we've got a question here that looks like it's come up. Would Biden roll back the doubling of standard deduction? So this is from Ralph. So Ralph, right now we don't have, at least I haven't seen, any, uh, any of intention to necessarily mess with the standard deduction. And if he's thinking that, then I haven't seen it published anywhere. So far, the only thing that I've seen that Biden wants to do is increase the top personal tax rate and he wants to cap deductions. So clearly Biden's goal here is to target higher income earning households. We haven't really heard that he wants to increase taxes much at all for the lower and middle income rates, all right? But as far as I know, Ralph, I haven't heard that he wants to change the standard deduction. Good question. Um, let's see, let's move on here. Let's talk about capital gains and dividends. So if you listen to our radio show, you hear us say all the time, owning assets inside of a taxable account that pay you dividends and that you can harvest long-term capital gains and capital losses for that matter, those are good things to hold because for the most part, dividends and long-term capital gains are gonna be taxed at 15% for most people. Now what Joe Biden wants to do is for any dividends and long-term capital gains above a million dollars. So again, high income earners, he wants to tax those as ordinary income, which would mean you would lose out if you've got that much in uh, income generation from those sources, capital gains and dividends, you would lose out on the favorable tax treatment of those sources of income. Now, again, this is just what he's saying right now. We don't know how this would change. In fact, we don't know how any of this would change. There's a big difference between what you hear on the campaign trail and what actually ends up happening. But that's what he wants to do right now. President Trump actually wants to reduce the capital gains rate. So he, they're already at 15% for most taxpayers, 20% for higher income. And then if you even add in the net investment income tax, the NIT, uh, which is uh, what, 3.2%, 3. something like that. So it makes the absolute maximum capital gains rate, long-term capital gains rate, about 23%. He wants to reduce it even further to what he hasn't said. But eventually he wants to reduce it, but also implement a capital gains tax holiday, meaning that for a period of time, and he hasn't said how long of a period of time, any capital gains recognized during that period of time would be completely tax-free. So that's what he wants to do. But again, qualify what we do have right now is qualified dividends and long-term capital gains are taxed at 15% for most taxpayers, except for the top income tax rate, okay? And for them, it's 20%. Still much more favorable than the 37% or 39.6% income tax rate, ordinary income tax rate. And again, if you have any questions about any of this, or you just want to make a comment, you can do so in our Q&A 
box. Uh, many of you have already been on this call many times, so you know the routine, but if you're new, you can hover over the little toolbox and you'll see, or toolbar, you'll see Q&A, you can ask a question, or you can go over to where it says chat, and you can put a comment in the chat window as well. Uh, what about individual tax credits? Joe Biden wants to increase the child tax credit to $8,000 per child to a maximum of $16,000. So right now, if you have dependent children, you can actually take a tax credit for eight or for $4,000 per child. You see that at the bottom. Plus you can get a $500 dependent care credit. If you don't have any dependent children, obviously this doesn't apply to you. We haven't really seen a lot on any other tax credits. Now there are some other tax credits. I, I shouldn't say that. Uh, Joe Biden wants to implement tax credits for uh, production of clean energy. Um, so wind energy credits, uh, he wants to actually bring back some of the tax credits that you saw several years ago under President Obama. Uh, if you get energy efficient windows, um, clean energy vehicles, things like that. But in terms of what will impact the most number of families, he wants to increase that child tax credit from 4000 to 8000 If you don't have children, obviously it doesn't, doesn't pertain to you. Now, President Trump doesn't really have any proposed changes to the child tax credit. However, for a lot of these tax credits, he wants to require that you have a social security number in order to take advantage of it. And it's pretty clear what the focus here is, right? We're talking about immigration. And so when you're dealing with, uh, you know, and that's one of his, uh, on his platform, he wants to try to limit the number of illegal immigrants in the country. And so in order to take advantage of some of these tax credits, he wants to require that you have a social security number. Well, obviously to have a social security number, you either need to be a documented immigrant or you need to be a naturalized citizen, correct? So uh, in fact, uh, I'm not even sure you can get a social security number if you are a documented immigrant and you're not a naturalized citizen. So that's kind of interesting right there. Um, what else? Education. What does Joe Biden want to do with education? Well, the biggest thing that he wants to do with education is he wants to exclude forgiven student loan debt as income. So right now, if you have a student loan, and uh, whether this is you personally or you have a family member that went to college and they got student loans, if any of that student loan debt is forgiven, meaning you don't have to pay it, that is counted as taxable income to you because it's now money that you didn't have, you don't have to pay anymore. Well, now that's considered as income to you. In fact, many loans that you owe, whether it's to a family member or anybody else, if a loan is forgiven to you under the tax code, in many cases, that can be considered as income to you, taxable income. What Joe Biden wants to do is exclude that now from taxable income. So if you have forgiven student loan debt, it wouldn't count as taxable income. What Trump wants to do, he doesn't necessarily want to mess with student loans, but he does want to provide a tax credit for individuals and corporations who make contributions to state authorized, state run scholarship organizations. Now, right now, about the best you can get is a tax deduction if you make a charitable contribution to a foundation or some organ some qualified 501c3 charity that provides assistance possibly to students who go to college. But if it's a state run organization that provides scholarships, state scholarships to go to college, those contributions are not, not tax deductible. There's really no tax benefit there at all. But what Trump wants to do is to encourage people to contribute to those and give you a tax credit. But again, currently student loans under current law are forgiven and if they are, they're considered taxable income. The corporate tax rate. This is gonna be a big deal, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, of all the tax changes we could see, the one that most likely will have the biggest impact on the stock market is the corporate tax rate. So when Trump signed the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017, he reduced, and he didn't do it by himself, Congress passed the bill first and he signed it, but it reduced the corporate tax rate from 35% down to 21%. We went from having one of the highest corporate taxes in the world to one of the lowest, which made investment in the United States for outside companies far more attractive, right? Because the tax rates were lower. It made investment 
domestically for American companies instead of going to countries where the tax rates were more favorable, it gave them incentive to keep their business here, right? Well, when companies don't have to pay as much in income taxes, what does that mean? Their profits go up, they pay higher dividends. These things tend to positively impact their stock prices. And we saw that even in 2018, which by itself was not that great a year for the stock market. The market ended up down six, 7% for the year. Corporate profits were off the charts because you had the stimulus of a far 14% lower income tax rate. Now, what Biden wants to do is he wants to increase that corporate tax rate from 21% to 28%, still below the 35% that it was, but higher than what it is now. If that were to happen, it would almost certainly negatively impact the stock market at least for a time, maybe a year, maybe a little less. But the point is the market would not react uh, very positively to an increase in taxes. Now, of course, not surprisingly, Donald Trump wants to keep the current 21% corporate tax rate the same, and he wants to make it permanent for ever, which right now it is intended to be permanent. The corporate tax rate is not intended to, at least from my understanding, not intended to sunset and move back to 35% starting in 2026. That corporate, uh, that tax rate is intended to stay permanent. What about payroll taxes? Payroll taxes are what funds Social Security and Medicare. So when you pay your portion of Social Security and Medicare taxes from your paycheck, or if you're a self-employed individual like I am, you have the privilege of paying all of it. That money goes to fund programs like Social Security and Medicare. Joe Biden wants to apply the current 12.4% Social Security tax. So when you get your paycheck, you pay 6.2% into Social Security of your salary. Your employer contributes a matching 6.2% for a total of 12.4% that goes into Social Security to pay those benefits. So Biden wants to take that same 12.4% and now apply it to taxable income above $400,000. This is significant because right now, if you look at the bottom, the 12.4% that you pay or that is paid currently only is paid on income up to a cap, a max of $137,700. So for example, if you make $150,000 a year, you're only paying social security tax on the first $137,700, and that's for 2020. That number gets indexed up as time goes by. Past that point, there is no social security tax. There is Medicare tax. In fact, there's no cap on how much of your income is taxed for Medicare, but for social security for this year, it's 137,700. So what Joe Biden would do is say, okay, we're gonna keep the social security tax up to the 137. Then there's gonna be a donut hole, a gap, where there is no social security tax collected. And then starting at 400,000 and above, it picks back up and we're gonna charge the same social security tax on again, high income earners, all right? So he's proposing half to the employer and half to the taxpayer. That's what he wants to do. The goal here would be to collect the same amount of money for Social Security, however, create another level from high income earners that would help to fund Social Security even further. If this were to pass, we would have more money over time to pay Social Security benefits, and it's projected that it would save Social Security and probably stave off uh, the depletion of the Social Security Trust into the 2050s. Right now, it's projected to run out by 2034. However, that is only if we maintain payroll taxes as a source of funding. What President Trump wants to do is eliminate payroll taxes completely. He wants to make the current payroll tax holiday permanent. So on, uh, what was it, August 28th, something like that. No, 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 it was earlier than that, but August 8th, I think. President Trump signed an executive order. So this was not an act of Congress, it was an executive order. And he actually suspended the payroll tax, the employee portion. So the 6.2% that you pay out of your paycheck, 
he has suspended collection of that tax starting yesterday, September 1st, through the end of the year, meaning that employers do not have to collect that payroll tax. Now, here's the, that, that's the executive order. From a practical standpoint, there's very little guidance on how this is gonna be done. I mean, chances are, you may not see a larger paycheck in September. You're supposed to. I'll be curious to see if companies actually pass through that savings on to you as employees, because here's the thing. It's only a payroll tax holiday. Eventually, that four months of payroll taxes for Social Security, you're gonna have to pay it back. It's not a complete forgiveness. Now, what Trump wants to do is forgive that starting next year, January of 2021, and then of course he wants to make it permanent. Now, you might be asking yourself, if we make payroll tax cuts permanent, how in the hell are we gonna fund Social Security? Nobody knows. There's no guidance, there's no plan for that, okay? But I'm just giving you information. I'm not here to come up with the solutions. I'm just telling you, this is what is being proposed by both the candidates. The estate tax. So Joe, Joe Biden wants to allow the estate tax exemption that we have right now to revert back to $5 million in 2025. So right now, here's, here's what we have. Again, Donald Trump signed the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act in 2017. What that did, one of the provisions was it increased the amount of money that you can die with and pass on to your heirs from $5 million to $10 million. Now that number gets indexed upwards each year. So that right now you can die with $11.58 million in assets that you transfer to your heirs and you would not pay any estate tax on that. If you're a married couple, married couples can unify their two exemptions. So the husband and the wife can mar uh, unify theirs so that a married couple, both of them could pass away with an estate of around $23 million and still avoid estate taxes. That's why less than half of 1% of all estates will pay estate tax in 2020 because this ensnares so few people. What Biden wants to do is he wants to allow that to revert back to the $5 million level so that you can die with far less money before taxes are owed. The other huge, huge change that Joe Biden wants to make is he wants to eliminate what's called the step up rule. When you pass away and you leave an asset like a house or a business or other things like that, what happens is you leave, let's say it's a house and you pass on and you, and you bought that house for say $100,000 when you bought it 25, 30 years ago. When you die, now the house is valued at $300,000. You'd leave that to your heirs, your children, whomever. Right now, the basis on that property, your basis is $100,000, what you paid for it. And if you sold it for $300,000, you would have a capital gain of $200,000 potentially. Well, right now you leave it to your heirs, their basis gets stepped up to whatever the value of the piece of property is on the day you die, $300,000. What that means is if your heirs turn it around and sell it for $300,000, there's not gonna be any capital gain because their basis, what they pay for it is 300, they sell it for the same, there's no capital gain, right? So there's no capital gains tax. Joe Biden wants to eliminate that rule, meaning that whatever you paid for the property is what will be inherited, the basis will be inherited by your heirs. And if they sell it for market value at that time, everything above that will be considered a taxable capital gain. That's a pretty significant change. I know for a fact there's some of you in this call today that know people that have passed on property and benefited from the step up rule. Now, what Trump wants to do is he wants to extend the current estate tax exemption of 11.58 million. He wants to extend it. In fact, he'd really like to make it permanent and he wants to keep the step up rule. So that is a pretty significant change with the estate taxes, all right? Uh, let's see, I don't have any other questions right now, so I periodically check. Uh, so let's go back. Okay. So 
here's some final thoughts as we wrap up today's Wednesday lunchtime drive through. If you think about Joe Biden, I know many of you are very concerned about a Joe Biden presidency. You're concerned that taxes are going to go up. And quite frankly, I'm there with you. I mean, my duty of responsibility is to my clients. And I don't want my clients, some of you on this call today, I don't want you to have to pay higher taxes. I don't want me to pay have to have to pay higher taxes. But let's think about this from a practical standpoint. Even though Joe Biden wants to raise taxes eventually, it is highly unlikely that if he is elected in November, it is highly unlikely that he's going to push for tax increases in his first year while the economy is still recovering and struggling from the COVID-19 virus, okay? Highly unlikely. He would have to be very stupid or have really bad advice to wanna to go out and do anything that is gonna further depress the economic and market environment while companies are still struggling to recover, while people are still unemployed, all right? The other thing is that right now we have a divided Congress. Now, I know some people are calling for the Democrats to take the Senate, no one knows. But one thing you can almost guarantee is if we continue to have a divided Congress, it's gonna be next to impossible to get any tax changes pushed through. Keep in mind, when President Trump signed the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act and got the tax rates lowered, he had a Congress controlled by Republicans. All right, 2018, the Republicans lost the House of Representatives to the Democrats, all right? So that's when we had that. So he got that in just in the nick of time. Not surprisingly, we haven't really gotten much done since then, right? Because we've had a divided Congress. So I want to, I tell you that to kind of allay your fears that taxes are instantly gonna go back up. It takes time to get taxes changed. Even with a Congress controlled by his own party, it took Donald Trump an entire year to get a tax proposal pushed through and signed into law. Now, what about Trump? If the payroll tax is permanent, we don't have any details on how we would fund Social Security, okay? Now, so far, he only wants to suspend and get rid of the payroll tax that funds Social Security. I imagine the one that funds Medicare is the same way. We don't know how those programs would be funded, so we would have to find a way to fund Social Security. It's also unknown how much any additional tax cuts would further add to our national debt, all right? So our debt has continued to go up as taxes have gone, I mean, it's basic math, right? Government collects less money. We don't have as much money to spend. So what do we do? We go debt spending, all right? So there are a lot of details that are still emerging. And also keep in mind, what the, can what the candidates say on the campaign trail is always rhetoric, right? It rarely ends up all being enacted. What they say now on the campaign trail could be very different from what actually ends up happening, all right? So, are there any questions? I'll take just a few minutes here. Uh, if there are any questions about taxes, uh, any thoughts that you might have regarding uh, any of that? Again, I'm not advocating one candidate over the other. Both candidates have tax proposals that have advantages and disadvantages, depending on who you are, right? And your station in life. Uh, don't have any questions right now. Still think of your questions, but while you're thinking, I want to invite you to, uh, I've got more to share. I've got a lot more uh, to share with you about retirement planning, taxes, uh, income planning, whatever, social security, Medicare. So I want to invite you to enroll in Rocky Retirement. Uh, many, of you, many of you already have. It's four hours of education spread over two nights. It's totally online. And for the rest of 2020, September, October, November, we are making it absolutely free because many of you are still struggling with the negative effects of the COVID-19 virus. Job losses, furloughs, reductions in your 401k value, you've got pension options you don't know what to do with. You just got a lot of questions, that's why we're doing this. We cover the five key areas of retirement planning that you need to know. We provide you the course workbook and your next opportunity is September 17th and 24th. The class is already filling up. We've had a ton of people listen to our radio show. And that's another thing, if you haven't listened to our show, you wanna tune in to News Radio 1000 KTOK, AM 1000 on your radio dial. Saturdays at 1 p.m., Sundays at 6 a.m. It's all about the money, honey. We talk about this and all kinds of other retirement planning topics that you need to know about. To get enrolled in that class, just go to Chapelwood U for Chapelwood University, chapelwoodu.com. You can enroll right there online, totally free, totally online, answer a few questions, and we'll see you in class. 
I don't see any other questions right here in our class for today. So again, I want to thank you so much for joining us for the Wednesday lunchtime drive through It's 1230. I always promise to get you out on time if I can, and I want to make sure I hold to that. So I want you to have a great day. Continue to take care of yourself. Stay safe. Um, we're looking forward to fall. It's going to be a great year. And uh, again, we're going to get through all of this together. All right. So keep the faith, stay strong. And if you ever have any questions, give us a call at 405-348-0909. And I'm even going to give you my personal email address. It's Damon, D-A-M-O-N, at Chapelwood, C-H-A-P-P-E-L-W-O-O-D.com. Damon at Chapelwood.com. I'll answer any question you want to ask me. All right. I'll see you on the radio and I'll see you in class. Thanks so much for being on the Wednesday lunchtime drive through.